Good afternoon and welcome to NASA's Johnson Space Center. This is the mission status briefing for the STS-132 flight on flight day 10, which featured the undocking of the Space Shuttle Atlantis from the International Space Station. To give us the status of today's activities, we have the mission operations representative from Mission Control, Brian Lunny. I'll turn it over to Brian for opening comments and then we'll take questions. Okay, thank you, Kylie. Well, things are going really well in space. We've had a really great day in space so far. Also had a really great docked mission uh, with the undocking today. We had, just to wrap up some of these things, we had three very successful AVAs, as you know. All six of the new P6 batteries are all online and doing really well, performing nominally. All of the planned transfer has been completed, uh, including the mini research module, which I'll go ahead and give you the numbers because I think some folks will ask, which weighed about 17,670 pounds. Uh, that is activated and is looking like it's in really good shape. The cargo pilot uh, was transferred over, of course, going up. It had about 7,532 pounds. That's 7,532 pounds coming down. Uh, we brought it back and put it in the payload bay. Of course, it's going to have 6,466 pounds. So with just the batteries on there, it lost about 1,000 pounds, give or take. The mid-deck transfer, we uh, transferred about 1,325 pounds of water to ISS. In addition, for cargo, we transferred about 2,192 pounds to the ISS. And on the way back, the shuttle is bringing home about 1,763 pounds of station cargo. Undock occurred today at 1022 local time, and the final separation burn was complete about 1205. Everything was nominal, and it was a beautiful fly around performed by our pilot, Tony Antonelli. Prior to undock, uh, there were some call downs from the crew that the space shuttle lights that illuminate the docking target uh, for undocking would not work. So the crew tried some uh, troubleshooting with that, uh, it had no success, so they went ahead and attached a flashlight to the area uh, that was illuminating the target for them, and that worked really well. So that little IFM uh, worked well, and we're glad the crew was able to take care of that for us. So undocking, undocking was accomplished with no issues, it was very clean. Of course, tomorrow is late inspection day, and all of that will be executed with the nominal procedures, followed by the uh, flight day 12, which will be our standard entry minus one day, uh, check out of all the entry systems, and then, of course, we're going to have a hopefully a landing, successful landing there at KSC, weather allowing, on Wednesday. The ISS is returning to nominal ops with the undocking. The Expedition 23 crew of Oleg Kotov, TJ Creamer, and Soichi Noguchi are prepping for a turn on June 1st. Uh, return prep does include a few extra things, uh, packing, a little extra exercise for them, a little extra prep time for them to get ready for the Soyuz landing. Um, in addition, I understand there's an ISSD boost of about 0.8 meters per second planned in a couple of days, and that'll set up the landing targeting for the uh, Soyuz. Uh, and finally, uh, also the oxygen generation assembly that shut down the other day. Uh, they have not done any troubleshooting on that since then. We'll pick up with some troubleshooting with that tomorrow and discussions here on the ground, and then uh, probably do some troubleshooting uh, Tuesday. Right now, the early, early indications are it's probably a pressure transducer, but folks are going to look at that. If that's what it is, we do have that spare part on board and can do a replacement if necessary. I think that's all I got. If I'm ready to take questions. Okay, we'll start here. Hi, Robert Perlman with CollectSpace.com. Um, in, with, with regards to oxygen, I, there was a problem yesterday with transferring oxygen from the shuttle to the station. Is that related and was that resolved before they undocked it? I think that when the mission status briefing occurred yesterday, there was about 20 pounds of oxygen out of the 70 that they wanted to uh, transfer over. We did transfer all the oxygen that we had planned to transfer to space station. Some of it went directly into their ISS high pressure oxygen tanks and some of it was transferred directly into the stack atmosphere. About 40 pounds was pushed into the tanks and the balance of that 70 pounds, so about 30 pounds was pushed into the atmosphere as part of a, a planned transfer. As far as uh, related to the OGA problem, that there were no issues with the oxygen transfer and there would not be any association between the two things. Uh, the oxygen transfer into the station was all nominal and it takes a little bit of time. You have to start and stop as the tanks, the pressure within the tanks and the temperatures in the tanks recover during a transfer, but it was all nominal and as expected. Um, and a follow-up, there was a call uh, soon after, um, I guess after separate the separation burns, that um, there was an accidental deletion of 138 images. Uh, did you ever find out what was on that card and um, presumably you can recover it um, after it gets down to the ground? Uh, yes, during, after SEP, uh, we, we did 
we were doing our regular OCA transfers, our downlinking of all the pictures from the shuttle that the folks on the shuttle had taken of the space station as we flew around at the external survey. So when the crew puts the camera card into the laptop and the folks here on the ground go to downlink those pictures, they have a procedure and process they go through. And we downlink thousands of pictures every flight. As it turned out in this case, uh, there was a mistake on the ground that occurred and we did accidentally delete 138 pictures. Those were pictures again of the ISS external survey. There were another 40 or so pictures on that particular card of, of the survey that were su successfully downlinked. And uh, we have another couple of cards with 250 pictures each that we, I don't know what's in them yet. We haven't gotten uh, uh, KU ops to be able to look at those. So we may have more pictures available to us of the external survey. Of the 138 that did get deleted, we did ask the crew to take the camera card, to bag it, stow it, bring it back to Houston, and hopefully we can recover those picture files from that card, uh, even though they were told to be deleted from the computer. Okay, with that, I will go to our reporters on the line first. Bill Harwood, please. Uh, yeah, hi, Brian. Can you give us a, a little sense of what the weather is looking like? I realize it's three days out, but uh, the forecast looks a little iffy to me. Thanks. Uh, Bill, I have not looked closely at the weather. It's Florida. Uh, there's no real strong driving thing going on from the brief chat I had with the uh, meteorologist. There is a low pressure that's hundreds of miles out into the Atlantic, and we don't think that's going to play too much. But again, we're four to five days out. Get my numbers right. Four days out. So it's too early to call. Uh, we'll know a lot better as we get closer what the models are going to say. And again, I had, that was on Friday when I spoke with them. I haven't talked to them since then. Do you have another question, Bill? And I could add for you, Bill, our entry flight director will be here tomorrow and he'll tell you all about it. Yeah, thanks, that's all. Thank you. Actually, the, the entry flight director will be here on Tuesday for that briefing. You're right. But um, next on the line is Tarek Malik, please. Thank you, uh, Tarek Malik with uh, Space.com. And Brian, I'm just, uh, I know that the uh, uh, Atlantis' GPS has been uh, cleared with respect to launch, and, uh, launch debris. Just curious if there's anything the crew will be looking for specifically tomorrow, um, and uh, if, if, the, uh, uh, <clears throat> if you're expecting to get a full, uh, a full inspection uh, as opposed to what you got uh, just after launch. Thanks. Okay. The thermal protection system, we did look at all the data from the uh, flight day two and flight day three downlinks, and all of that looked really good. Uh, some of the resolution wasn't quite as close as we would have liked, and we're going to get that with tomorrow's procedures. The late inspection procedures we will run tomorrow are all nominal, exactly what we have done on all the previous flights. So we'll have all the full uh, resolution of all the data that we want, uh, and, we'll be able to, and the MMT will go and address that after the damage assessment team goes through their rigorous review process to look at each uh, piece of that data. And then once the MMT assesses it, we'll be able to uh, see how we're doing. I fully expect things are going to look good, and we're going to be ready for landing on Wednesday. Okay, Tark, did you have another question, or is that it? That's all for me. Thank you. And any follow-ups here? Seeing none, we'll go ahead and send it back to Mission Control for an update of the activities in space. The crew is scheduled to go to sleep at 3.50 uh, p.m. Central Time, and flight day highlights are scheduled to begin at 4 p.m. Central Time on the hour every hour while the crew sleeps. And you can stay tuned online at www.nasa.gov shuttle. Thank you.